This is the aqueous reactions lab where we're going to look at a series of double replacement reactions and we'll practice balancing the equations and then also writing net ionic equations um, and practice using our solubility rules as well. Um, so what we have here is kind of a grid where we have chemicals going down. So iron nitrate, I already put a drop of iron nitrate in each of these boxes. Uh, silver nitrate in each of these. Lead 2 nitrate in each of these and then barium chloride in each of these. Uh, we're going to react those with, going across here, copper sulfate. So in this first box here, it'll be copper sulfate reacting with iron nitrate. And we'll be able to see if a double replacement reaction takes place. Double replacement reactions only take place if one of the products is insoluble. So it'll give us a chance to predict the products and also um, use our solubility rules to figure out which of those products is causing the precipitate to form. So if you look at these first two, uh, they stayed relatively clear, no precipitate formed. But if you look at the second two, they got cloudy. So a precipitate formed, one of the products was insoluble. And when you're answering the questions at the end of the lab, you'll have to figure out which of the products was insoluble and write the net ionic equation for that solid that was formed. Uh, going across this next row right here, we have the uh, ammonium carbonate, so we'll put a drop of that on each of these. And we'll see what happens there. And it looks like reactions took place in each of those. You got solutions that got cloudy. Okay, this one's kind of a, an orangish color, but you can see that each one of them got white and cloudy. It's no longer a transparent solution, but some kind of solid has formed. The next one will be the phosphate, uh, ammonium phosphate ions. We'll take a look at those reactions. Uh, the next one is potassium chromate. Chromate was not on our list of solubility rules, but chromate is generally insoluble. Uh, when it's with an alkali metal like potassium, it's soluble. But in most other cases, potassium uh, or chromate is going to be insoluble. There are the chromate ions being added to. And then in our last one, we have sodium hydroxide. All right, so you can make your observations. You can observe whether a precipitate formed, and if so, what color it was. And then you'll need to write the double replacement reactions and balance them. Uh, use your solubility rules to figure out which product was a solid, which one remained aqueous, and then once you know which one was a solid, you can write out the net ionic equation for the formation of that precipitate.